more algebra for derivatives. So if I took a limit of a product, the answer was take the limit of each function and then multiply them together. Okay, the answer is almost what you would guess it would be. For derivatives, the rule for the product is not going to be so straightforward. So this is what we call the product rule. If I have two functions, f and g, multiply them together, take their derivative, the rule is going to be derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. If I had any number of functions multiplied together, the general rule is you take the derivative of each function, leave every other term alone, and then take the sum over all those terms. For here, we're just going to focus on the product of two functions. All right, first few examples are just going to be making sure we get the answer for things that we already know. So for my first example, we'll take x squared minus 1 times x minus 2. We know how to do this one because all we need to do is multiply through, we get a polynomial, and then we just apply our rule for polynomials. So in this case, when you multiply through, you're going to get x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. If I take the derivative of that, our rule is just going to be, okay, constants you can sit out, and then for x to a power, it's just drop the power, then subtract 1 off the power. So that's going to leave us with 3x squared minus 4x minus 1. Okay, we can do it also using the product rule. So when I do that, what's going to happen? I have x squared minus 1 times x minus 2. So I take the derivative of the first. Derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. We just multiply that by x minus 2. And then I'm going to add, you leave the x squared minus 1 alone. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of x minus 2, which is just 1. When I collect all our terms together, you notice we're just going to wind up with the answer we got originally. 3x squared minus 4x minus 1. Now, let's take a look at our power rule in general. So in theory, if I just had the product rule and the derivative of x, I could get my rule for all powers of x. So let's take a look at how that would work. So I start off, the derivative of x is going to be equal to 1. Then, if I want the derivative of x squared, well, x squared is just x times x, so I can apply the product rule to that. Derivative of the first is 1 times x plus x times derivative of the second, which is 1, and I get a 2x. If I want x cubed, that's just going to be x times x squared. We take its derivative. Derivative of x is just going to be 1, leaving me with an x squared, and then plus x times the derivative of x squared, which we just saw was 2x, so our answer is going to be 3x squared, and that agrees with what we already know. And now note, we could just keep pushing this forward and forward one at a time, and you get the answer that you expect. Okay, for something we don't know how to do, let's take a look at f of x equal to sine of 2x. So we don't have a rule yet for how to pull the 2x out, but we can do this if we pull out a trig identity and then apply our product rule. So here, I can rewrite sine of 2x as 2 sine x cosine x. If I apply the product rule to this, what's going to happen? First off, we could set the 2 out in front and just do our sine x 2x by itself. Derivative of sine x is going to be cosine x. So that's cosine x times cosine x. And then derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, which is going to contribute a minus sine x times sine x. OK. Now, Putting that together, that's going to give me cosine squared minus sine squared, which we have another identity for, which is going to be cosine of 2x. So the derivative of sine of 2x is 2 times cosine 2x. How do I get the product rule? Our main trick is going to be adding 0. Adding 0 to anything leaves it unchanged. So what we're going to do is add 0 in a clever way, and that's going to get us to our answer. Okay, we start by just following our nose with the limit definition of the derivative. So I take the derivative of f times g, that's going to be the limit, so h goes to 0, of f times g on x plus h minus f times g on x divided by h. Okay, looking at that, there's nothing we can directly do with that to get us to our answer or to anything else. So we're going to have to introduce some terms in the numerator to let us get some work done. Okay, so with a little bit of foresight, you might see that if I add in or subtract 
f of x plus h times g of x, okay, if I subtract that off the first term, then I have to add it in on the second term, so that way I'm just adding zero. You'll notice that f of x plus h can be factored out, and then the gadget that's left over on the first two terms is gonna be the thing that goes to g prime as I take the limit. Similarly, if you go to the other two terms, we're gonna be able to factor out this g of x, and then what's left over is gonna be the gadget that goes to f prime. So when I take the limit, what's gonna be left over is gonna be our rule for the product.